Hello, ghost hunters. As you likely already know, Phasmophobia had their Halloween update. Stay tuned to see what's new. The first noticeable thing in the Phasmophobia update is the Halloween lobby. I'm not sure how long we will have this lobby for, but you should definitely check it out while it is still available. Make sure you grab one of the UV lights under the mission board and look around. The next most noticeable change is the weather. There are six different types of weather, clear skies, fog, light rain, heavy rain, strong wind, and light snow. These weather types will affect the temperature in your location, making it more difficult to find the ghost with the thermometer and rain and wind will impair your hearing, making it harder to hear the ghost open doors and move objects. Thick fog will reduce visibility, and despite fog only being outside your typical locations, it does affect visibility inside your location too. The Ouija board got a rework as well. Sadly, it still looks exactly like the old Ouija board, but now how it affects your sanity will change. The board will no longer lower your sanity greatly when the ghost responds, rather than just the 10% that it used to do. If the ghost doesn't respond, however, you will only lose a small fraction of sanity. We also got a whopping four new ghost types. The Anryo, the Twins, the Obake, and the Reiju. This will certainly shake things up as it now gives you many more options for what type of ghost you may be dealing with. For those of you keeping tabs, this now makes ghost writing the least common evidence with only seven of the 20 ghosts having it as evidence. The most common evidence is now EMF, with half of the ghost giving EMF 5 as evidence. So what else is new? Well, there is a new map. A very unique new map. Maple Lodge campsite is almost completely outside. That makes this map much more difficult, as players will be greatly impacted by the weather. There are, of course, a few small structures without doors, several tents, and a cabin. This map actually feels quite large and has some unique lighting. As someone who does not love the loud ambient noise of the weather, I personally do not love this map. It feels spread out and confusing as areas that seem like you should be able to pass through are not actually accessible. As far as maps go, this map definitely feels more difficult than the other maps. And while it is not as large as the asylum, the multiple tents and the small covered areas gives it that same feel with a lot of area to cover. As far as appearance goes, this map looks amazing. It has much more unique items than the other locations and has an ambiance that is not in the other maps. However, because it is mostly outside, it also lacks the white noise that we're used to hearing in some of the other maps. For me personally, this takes away from the spooky feeling that I'm used to in Phasmophobia. And maybe it is the outdoors location, but I do not feel as trapped when the ghost is hunting as I do in the other maps. So this map somehow manages to feel more difficult while also feeling less spooky. After a few games on this map, I have to admit that I do not see this map being a fan favorite. The other big change is the difficulty rework. For the most part, amateur difficulty remains the same. However, starting with intermediate, ghost hunters will begin to notice a few small changes making the game a bit more difficult. For example, the sanity pills recover a bit less sanity, as far as I can tell, by about 5 for a total of 35 total recovered sanity. The fuse box is off, and there are fewer places to hide, as closets will sometimes have items stuffed in them. Professional maps will now include the ghost sometimes changing its preferred room. The fuse box will be off, and there are much fewer hiding places. Sanity pills will restore even less sanity by about 10, for a total of about 30 recovered sanity. This update brought us a new difficulty called Nightmare, and it is appropriately named. This is definitely a very challenging difficulty and will likely result in more death and incorrect guesses on the ghost type than the other difficulties. Ghosts will only reveal two evidences, which makes it very difficult to narrow down your ghost as you also cannot eliminate evidence, as it's possible the ghost just isn't revealing them. The ghost will sometimes change its preferred room, the hunt grace period, the time from when the hunt begins to when the ghost is actively hunting, is now very short. The ghost will hunt for a long time, and if it kills someone, it will extend this timer rather than ending the hunt. This means that all players can technically die in the first hunt. 
Sanity pills restore a lot less sanity, but as some equipment is damaged upon your arrival, there is no way to correctly determine how much this is. But based on the other difficulties, I think it is safe to say that at most, it will recover 25 sanity. The fuse box starts off and there are almost no hiding spots. While this difficulty is not impossible, it is very difficult. If you are an experienced ghost hunter, chances are this will definitely liven the game for you a bit. It should make things more challenging and more interesting. As for the lack of evidence, good luck guessing your ghost type. I personally love that the hunt is so challenging, but I do not love the lack of evidence. And in fact, find that the most frustrating part of this game in any difficulty. A few other things that are new in this update include changes to the map in the van. While it only currently affects Maple Lodge campsite, the developer has indicated that this new map style will be coming to the other maps in the future. I personally am not a fan. This new map style seems confusing and clunky. Players should also notice shorter hunt durations on small and medium maps. Ghosts will not always leave fingerprints when interacting with the environment, and when they do, they'll disappear after 60 seconds. All contracts are now available all the time. This means players can choose any map they want and any difficulty rather than having a select view to choose from. Information on these maps has changed as well to give less detail about the location and more information about the difficulty. The bone has been updated and can appear as any bone from the human body. Some sounds have been updated and will now fade in and out rather than abruptly stopping. Ghosts will disrupt electronic equipment whenever they are visible, making it more difficult to determine if the ghost is hunting or not. The walkie-talkie will only play static when near the ghost, and this static sound will also attract the ghost during a hunt. The ghost and players can now interact with many of the showers, and players can place sound and motion sensors on the floor. Overall, many of the changes in this update make the game much more challenging, regardless of the difficulty that you choose to play on. Certainly, these changes make the game scarier for all players. While I like most of the changes in this patch, I'm definitely not a fan of all of the changes. What parts of this update did you enjoy most? Do you like the new map, or the new ghost, or the new difficulty? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, remember to like and subscribe, and as always, happy hunting.